No, for the bodies. Uh, boots. Starting with the boots. I actually primed them with uh, gray seal. And then blessing them from the top with white skull. Yeah, which is very white, just to get a little bit of a dimension. And because you want to change the textures that will show up, I'm gonna put something like this on top. I actually have somewhere, but I can't find it right now, a satin finish, so I'm not gonna put a gloss. I'm just gonna put a satin on top. So these are the boots, and uh, except for the satin finish, uh, when I managed to find the can, they are pretty much done. The body, the body actually primed with uh, Mechanical Standard Grey. Although the suit is white, um, you want some shadows and everything else to show up on top of it. So I'm actually fine starting with, with a grey primer and now using, first of all, grey uh, gray seal, I'm going to start hitting it from the top. So again, like a zenithal priming. Obviously a little bit stronger this time around, so I'm just gonna hit it all over to bring it towards white. At the very end, I'm gonna do again with white skull, which is the whitest white, um, more subtle, let's say, highlighting. I'm gonna let that dry and for the uh, plate, logo plate, I've actually used the retributor armor and just sprayed it all over. And with a lot of caution, I'm gonna be painting uh, his signature in, uh, in black and obviously with a fine brush. So this is going inside of the table. And for the boots, I found the satin. So this is the one I want. It's actually a little bit more um, glossy compared to something like Citadel Monitorium varnish which is also setting, but this will look uh, great on, on the boots. So we're just gonna spray them. Yeah. Shake it. Coming to the suit, what I have done so far is that I put uh, the same Blood Angels red that we put on the cape on his shirt that's here. I'll probably have to tidy up the edges. And now we want, uh, I want to continue with painting the jewels, let's say. There are a couple of ways to do this and I have been experimenting on the back to see which one I like it. I think we'll go with this one, which is a more like um, jewel effect. Uh, it's actually inspired from this video that I will put the link now on the screen. So uh, you can check out the guy, he's explaining in more details the technique. This is how it will look if you just apply um, a contrast paint, Blood Angels Red, over a silver base. And this, I used actually Blood for the Blood Gods, the technical that we're normally using for the blood. I like this one the most, so I think I'm going to continue doing it uh, all throughout with this one. And I've started experimenting on the, on the front. I'll have to get up close, I have the magnifying glass on my head already because it's very, uh, you need to pay attention to the borders. But anyhow, I'll show you the process. First of all, you need to start with actually a black color, a blackish color. I'm starting with Black Templar. I put it on some improvised uh, wet palette, so just some baking paper on top of the wet napkin, because I will need to keep it wet. And using a small brush, try to get this up close, 
I'm doing like this uh, butterfly, so I'm trying to leave a little bit of white on the very top, I hope it focuses, and then on the bottom I'm doing this shape, so down, up, and uh, down again, yeah? like a valley. And then slowly on the bottom flicker it out, just to blend it out. So you want this shape, let's say, on the top. Uh, try to think how the light would hit actually. So I'm thinking my light would hit something like this. And this is where you want this white dot to be. If it helps you in any, any way, you can just uh, put it. So think how the light uh, you'd, like, uh, you'd like the light to hit. Yeah. So I'm normally going with this direction because this is where I have my lamp actually. And uh, I will have the white here and then the lightest part uh, down in the bottom. I'm applying the same for, for everything. Obviously the angle will change a little bit, so just pick a, pick a direction. So for this button it will be here, for this button it will be a little bit on top. You see? Because it will go... Just think where you want this to go and create this shape. This is probably actually a little bit wrong, should have been a little bit more like this. I'll correct it with white. And then what other colors you need is you want an orangey shade. I'm using this one. And obviously you want a red. Yeah, that's going to blend it all together. And white to correct it. I'm using this one because I'm just trying to use it. And that's the effect you want to get to mimic a jewelry. At the very end, uh, we're gonna put a technical art code on top of it. So, at this moment, I'm just gonna start painting all this uh, uh, black, and uh, then I'll show you how it looks. Most important thing, keep in mind the direction of the light. Pick one, let's say parallel to his color, just to have an easy reference, and then took. Yeah, where would this go? Where would you have this dot? Yeah. So this one, you need to focus on. Coming to think about it, the closest shape you can go with is something like a Batman logo. So you can see how I created this black one. Try to do something like this, but the only thing is you want to blend this down. You want diffused edges. You can wipe the brush if it has too much and then uh, blend it down. This you can keep more intense. Yeah, so follow the Padman logo everywhere. Right, so you can see what I've done. So on each and every one, I've created that black shape. And then I put some, um, the white dot on the very top. You want to make that very, very white. And then on the bottom, I just uh, added again some white and you just blend it out and flicker it into the black to create some form of uh, transition. And you do that all throughout. The whole idea is to have this this thing you see in the middle, this transition, because that will give the effect of that jewelry, and the white dot on top. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it can be obviously uneven, um, because that's uh, it's just light reflecting, so we kind of expect it to be like this. I'm next to actually going to start with this color and put it on the very bottom. So just any orangey works. Uh, the more transparent, the, the better, I would say. And put it down, primarily down and on the border, something like this, but very lightly, and then flick it up. Flick it up, like blend it up. And, yeah. And obviously we're gonna come, I'm gonna do all, all the, um, all the jewels like this. And at the very end, we're gonna come with red, primarily on the middle. Uh, I do like to put a little bit on the top, L less, let's say less than, uh, than, uh, than you would put in the bottom, let's say of an intensive color, but I do like to put uh, a little bit on the on the top. Or you can maybe put it something like around the edges just to, to blend the white, I think this is better. Just around the edges to blend the white into the black. Yeah, so do this everywhere. 
Okay, and that's the orange put down all over. No, for the red, we're still using Blood Angels Red, but I put it on the white palette and I'm going to use it quite diluted. And what you want to do is start and put it on top of the black. Oops, focusing. And blend it out in the neighboring regions. You see? So what you want is you want a very white dot here and a very light region here, a little bit longer, a little bit larger. Yeah, it would be the effect when the light hits. Well, I'm gonna come afterwards and put, yeah, I'm taking the white and right in the middle, enhancing it. Okay, probably should have cleaned the blush first, sorry. Yeah, so I'm taking a little bit of white and I'm gonna be putting it on this top. So blend, uh, blend the red into the yellow now. That's the whole idea. Okay, so what I did is, uh, as I mentioned, I blend down the red. On the transition, wherever it was a little bit more uh, rough, let's say, I put uh, more undiluted red. I even went in with ball red because this has a stronger pigment. And then I just refined with white the, the dot in the top and uh, the bottom part, let's say, and came back with some... Um, yellow, orange, yellow on top of it. Now what I'm gonna do is with white, I'm gonna clean uh, around the edges. Obviously, again, you need to get up close because you need to pay attention to what you're doing and just clean clean all the edges and also what's missing here with the, with the red, I'm gonna add them back in. Moving on to the cape. What I have done already is primed it also with Mechanical Standard Grey and then also uh, spray painted, painted it like a Zenithal primer with, um, with white, yeah. I don't remember the shade's name. But. Moving on to the cape. What I have done already is primed it in the same manner I have primed the body. First of all, applying Mechanical Standard Grey Spray all over. Then uh, a little bit more intensive Grey Seal, which is a light grey. And then white scar from the top just to, to catch the highlights. Now we, now we want to do the inside uh, of the cape uh, in uh, red, while the outside will remain uh, white white with those gold accents. In order to do that, we obviously need to mask it a little bit. And I wanted to, to explain you a little bit how I'm doing. If you have any better ideas, feel free to share them because I'm not usually uh, the one doing masks and everything. So um, I'm planning to use this seam that it's already sculpted because you see there's a separation between the back part and the and the front part. So what I have done is that I have masked the seam and then I'm running my finger over the masking tape just to, to see where this demarcation is. 
The whole idea is to get a clean cut and a clean uh, demarcation uh, separation between the colors as well. That's why I want first of all to see where the seam is and then using a cutter or a sharp blade, just put the tip of the blade in this separation and cut off the tape. Yeah. And then when you peel it off, Yes, it will peel off just the front part. And you can see I will have this uh, back part um, still must. So when I spray paint, when I brush the red, it shouldn't get to the back part, which is what we wanted. So I'm just going to finish uh, doing this all throughout. And then using uh, Blood Angels Red, I'll put it, <coughs> sorry, I'll put it in the airbrush. Uh, just gonna be spray painting the inside of the cape uh, with this color. Talking about the skin, it's the same process as always, so we'll be going uh, through it quite fast. I have primed it white, so both his face uh, and obviously his arm, his hands. This is some extra hand from another model that I'm working on. And then we're going to be applying two, um, two, let's say, colors. First of all, a darker one being a mix of these colors. The proportion is 4411. And uh, we're gonna let it dry, then we're gonna dry brush with a lighter mix, which is uh, amber and ruby. We're gonna let it dry. To dry brush, remember, we use this very fluffy brush, so anything that's uh, very soft and very big, because it was gonna do the dry brushing very easy. Afterwards, we're gonna do some speckling with um, regular fl flesh shading gloss and whatever battered stiff brush you have. And obviously wipe it off with a sponge, pat it on with a sponge. And then we're going to move into using the purple as a watercolor pencil to define the wrinkles. And then to bring more um, life to the face, we're going to use some pastels. Mainly browns for the contouring of the face and then reds and uh, a little bit of yellow actually for, um, for the rest of the face. Yeah. So we'll be going uh, through this uh, fast. You have in the description a more detailed tutorial if you want to see it, but the process is the same as always. One other thing that we're doing obviously different is um, the eyes are closed and uh, he has eyelashes on. I'm going to define them first of all using uh, the black watercolor pencil and, and the fine brush, because if you mess something up, for being black, it's going to be very difficult to, to correct. For his hair, because it's uh, it's black, I'm actually going to start with a darker base than I normally use. So I'm going to use Mechanical Standard Grey, any dark grey. And then I'm going to use a contrast paint, which is a black Templar, which is a grey with a blue tint. And because you're going to have that base, uh, uh, 
the highlights will appear actually with this uh, grayish bluish tint so this will be for his hair i will be doing the hair before i start moving to the watercolor and the pastas to have them all ready. It's normally a good idea, especially if you're at the beginning, after you finish with the face paints, so before you move to, to the dry part, to do the hair, because that will, once you see the hair in, it will indicate if the face is too, dark, is too light or too dark. Usually it's too light because when you have something like this with uh, without the color hair, you tend to believe that the colors are darker than they actually are. And when once you put a dark hair on, you'll realize, oh, he's very, very white. And then, because you haven't done the pastels yet, you can just go in heavier with the pastels to, to make him like a normal color. Okay, so that's the process for the face, for the skin, actually.
So that's the head after the pastels and everything. And um, as you can see, we're pretty much done. What's left to be done um, is obviously the mouth. And um, I have a more detailed tutorial on the channel. I'll link it below. Uh, we're gonna do some yellowish white for the teeth and inside we're gonna put some uh, transparent red uh, I'm using the pigment from from the army painter skin set and that's pretty much it for the head uh, For the hands obviously we need to paint the base the handle of the microphone most likely with um, black Templar and the top silver and afterwards we're gonna have to put some dry wash just to uh, some dry wash some wash sorry just for you to get into the details something like nano oil or um uh, Argax earth, earth shade probably nan oil um, see if it shows up and also up close um uh, what i did on the suit so obviously after it dried we need to start painting the details for his shirt and the uh, jewels, we're going to be using uh, Blood Angels Red. And uh, it's the same color we're going to use for the cape. We're going to have to spray paint it, uh, airbrush it on the cape because it's so big. And just with a fine brush, get up close and paint to your best abilities all the, all the, all the jewelry that has. I haven't finished yet. Uh, there are more details to be painted on his... Um, on his belt, but as I mentioned, you need to get up close. On top of them, on the shirt and on the cape, we're gonna apply something like, uh, not this one, something like a satin varnish. On the cape, most likely I'm gonna use a spray, uh, the same spray we used for the boots, just to give it that sheen. And on the jewels, we're gonna apply a gloss, like the art coat that we're applying normally for everything else. Ah, yeah, and by the way, in the mouth, at the very end, you're also going to apply a hard coat. So, I'm actually letting this dry. I'm not touching it anymore. And uh, I'm going to focus on the mouth now and uh, the teeth and everything else, just to be finished with the accessories. Here are some rings. We need to look at some reference pictures, most likely they're gold. So, we're going to have to paint this gold when we paint the details on the suit gold. So, I won't be bothering with them at this very moment.
And that's it. Now you assemble the model and this is the finished result. Thank you everybody.